This lecture is about Christopher Alexander's 15 fundamental properties. These are 15 uh, geometrical properties that uh, Alexander has observed in uh, all uh, objects that have life. And uh, the range of scales is all possible scales, namely from an artifact that you can hold in your hand to a painting, to a piece of sculpture, to a component of a room, a window, a door, a cabinet, uh, a room itself, uh, a house, uh, the facade of a building, uh, urban space, a portion of urban space, cluster of buildings. So these are geometrical properties that are um, observed in um, things and objects that have life. So uh, Alexander has, um, has uh, made the list of 15, and I'm not going to read it here. Now below I have uh, several references. So, um, of course, the best reference is, uh, is Christopher Alexander's own book, From the Nature of Order, Volume 1, where there's a very long chapter where he discusses the 15 fundamental properties. Uh, those who do not have access to this book, uh, uh, also below, uh, I have a link to uh, online, uh, free online essays that list the properties, so you can get, uh, you can get that list there. Now, uh, the 15 properties... Um, Alexander himself does not use the properties to design because Alexander himself has uh, decades of practice. So he has trained himself intuitively to uh, see what has life and to take design decisions when he has to design something like a house, a resident. Uh, he takes the design decisions and um, he um, uh, instinctively, because, because he has trained himself, he instinctively makes sure that all those properties are satisfied. Only when something is, uh, he's, he's stuck on a design decision, then he will uh, actually uh, uh, um, use analytical tools to say, well, you know, I'm stuck on this, uh, which of, of two or three um, uh, alternatives do I choose, or there are no alternatives, how do I make this uh, more alive, uh, say, uh, uh, an entrance. So that um, then he can apply analytical tools to derive a result, just like a mathematician would derive a solution from a, um, a, uh, uh, a well-established uh, procedure, uh, iterative procedure for, for solving a problem. Uh, however, what I'm talking about, the design method uh, developed by Christopher Alexander, is unknown to most uh, architects today. So uh, we really have to start from uh, the, the pieces of the design method. And those pieces are uh, the 15 fundamental properties. Now, the number is not really important. Uh, Alexander found that this was very useful. It was very useful to have 15 explicit properties that he could teach his students because then he could discuss each one like he does uh, in the text uh, and then the students could uh, uh, train themselves and make drawings or make models and uh, then observe these each property in nature and understand it better and then <clears throat> when time came for these students to apply the what they have learned they, they apply them all together um, in a, uh, in a design or a project or an actual building uh, where all the 15 properties uh, can be found. If you want to derive more properties, uh, you will discover something that is, uh, that is curious. You say, well, here is another property that I have found from a wonderful architecture, say, of 400 years ago and is beautiful and alive. Uh, you will discover that you are really restating uh, properties already already stated by Alexander. So, uh, 15 is sort of a maximum. Um, uh, if you try to add something, it already is contained in the list of 15 properties. Now, try to go the other way. As a mathematician, you may you might say, well, you know, 15 is too many. Let me cut them down. Well, you know, you can cut them down to 12, say, you know, and uh, Alexander did this. But then when you start to go below 12, you are losing important, uh, important uh, descriptors. So you really, uh, the, the number 15 plus or minus a few is, is, is the optimal number. 
uh, of properties. So, uh, and uh, where did Alexander get these properties? Well, he, he looked at, um, at the most wonderful architecture, but not only the architecture, he looked at the material culture, all the artwork, all, all the folk art, uh, all, all the, all, all the um, uh, products of, of many different cultures around the world throughout history. They have the 15 properties because um, people, created people who, who uh, built wonderful buildings and created uh, the, the material culture, the physical culture uh, of a society, instinctively knew these properties because you find them uh, in, in the artifacts. You go to, uh, to a museum, you know, stay out of the uh, contemporary part, uh, and, and the rest of the museum has objects that uh, have the 15 properties. Uh, you know, once you know what to look for after following this lecture and reading the background material, then you, you find them, you know, everywhere from, from, uh, from, from India to, to, to uh, pre-Columbian Peru to, to uh, uh, cultures in Africa. Uh, you, you see these properties. People uh, instinctively had and many still have these properties. Uh, the problem is when you go to the contemporary wing of the art museum, you see objects that deliberately violate the properties. Uh, you know, that's another matter. Um, I just want to mention it in case you say, well, uh, there is a contradiction. Yes, there is a contradiction, but this is not the, uh, uh, the place to talk about it. I wish to recall the roots of the modern style and the birth of the modern, modernist style, which occurred through um, its uh, invented um, distinction from a traditional ornamented architecture. Um, the early modernist became um, famous by attacking and condemning a millennia of traditional ornamented architecture and branded, branded at all of that as a criminal activity. Uh, this was highly polarizing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our society carries this uh, polarization on, still very strong today uh, in uh, discussions, professional um, organizations of architects, the architects' schools. Uh, this is in the um, philosophical makeup of the, of the architecture profession today. Uh, the 15 geometrical properties can help to finally uh, break that um, polarization and an open design up to this enormous range of, of creativity that, um, that has not been seen for, for a century, over, over a century. Uh, what happened a century ago is that um, the, the Bauhaus and related movements in the early 20th century um, claimed to have invented the universal truth and everything else was redundant and, uh, and uh, not worthy of attention. Uh, after that point, external influences on design were just ignored uh, or, or uh, actively um, uh, blocked uh, because they were felt to be hostile to the, to the design canon of the universal truth that was established. Uh, this was a very unhealthy um, uh, development, but we still live with it uh, today. Uh, what happened, therefore, is that um, uh, design thinking narrowed down extremely, uh, and this is uh, this is so despite very loud statements to the contrary that you hear for a whole century uh, by practicing architects and architectural academics. Uh, I'm afraid I, I believe none of that because it is belied by the evidence. Uh, um, uh, there has been a terrible focusing on a very narrow design vocabulary driven by only one or two ideas and, and everything else uh, just doesn't exist. Um, um, for this reason, the 15 geometrical properties lie in a different universe to the one that uh, most architects uh, and ar architectural academics inhabit. Uh, therefore, it's of no, these properties are of no interest to them. Um, uh, furthermore, uh, the topic is emotionally loaded because the, the uh, uh, very strict design canon that has been practiced for over a century, including all of its variations, 
uh, has been uh, uh, charged by linking it to um, uh, social liberation, uh, economic progress, uh, development, etc. This is a, a emotional loading uh, with, with concepts that, that ultimately make it impossible to question uh, the design canon. Uh, and nevertheless, um, if we introduce the 15 geometrical properties, they do question the design canon that has been practiced for over, uh, over a century. Uh, and, and we come up to this great stumbling block. So most architects will just ignore uh, the 15 properties because they, they, they feel very uncomfortable when they're, uh, are, are, they're the universe, their, their conception of the universe, their, their conception of design philosophy that they have been taught and, and brought up with. When those are questions, and they are questions by the 15 properties, that um, uh, it is easier just to ignore this and, um, and not bother with, with, with something like, uh, like, uh, like the 15 geometrical properties. Uh, and nevertheless, um, the 15 properties broaden our conception of the forms that are possible. Uh, because um, we see the 15 properties in nature. They come from the structure of the universe. This is before life. Uh, and the living forms followed exactly these properties in their own development. So we see the properties in living forms. And it follows that when we humans uh, create the built environment, we should follow the 15 geometrical properties as well if we are to build an adaptive built environment that is good for our health and um, uh, there's absolutely no no question about this this is incontrovertible uh, however as i've explained uh, it runs up against a, a vision of the universe a worldview which is impossible uh, to change uh, for most people so there is an ideological aversion to the 15 properties which is a cult which is cultural baggage that we have been carrying for a hundred years or so. And um, some of us are trying to uh, educate people as, as to the severe limitation uh, of the um, uh, of what has happened for, for design and for the built environment. So uh, this is a huge problem. After we solve this unsolvable problem, then we can convince people uh, to expand their horizons, the conception of, uh, of the forms of design. And then we can begin to discuss each of the 15 properties uh, in detail. Uh, so uh, as, as I have been discussing in this course, um, once you have the 15 properties, you see that they're wonderful. You can use them uh, for design by combining them and the results are, are uh, adaptive and uh, they provide uh, the tools to create healing environments. For the, for the residents, for the users of these environments. Um, something that has been ignored by the narrowing down of, of design over the past century. The, 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 the health and the um, emotional well being of the user are not part of the equation when you narrow down. So even if you ignore one property, um, when you design, uh, that diminishes the emotional and healing effects of what uh, can be built um, um, using uh, the toolbox that you choose. Uh, but until then, uh, architects and uh, architectural, architectural academics are usually just uh, blind and deaf to the 15 geometrical properties uh, because they have not um, seen them before and if they see them, then uh, they notice that they have nothing to do with uh, uh, their own um, design canon that they have um, that they have been taught is sufficient and uh, to, to design anything you want, and that nothing else is necessary. Well, the fifteen properties are something else, something outside. So of course they they reject this because it is outside uh, the worldview. Uh, so um, we have uh, uh, the problem and we have the solution. 
the, the problem is that um, architects today for a, for over a century have lived in this universe and um, have accepted a design canon that they are very happy with. Uh, ordinary people, common people are not happy with it because ordinary people find that the results are, are disturbing. Um, uh, however, in order to, to, um, to introduce uh, a broader vision of the universe, which implies a broader vision of design, uh, then we have to um, convince uh, the architectural profession of why this is necessary, why uh, what they have been doing for a century is simply inadequate. Well, you say that and people get extremely upset. And when people get upset, well, they either attack us or they attack us and just close their minds to what we have to say. Um, what is the solution? Uh, well, the solution is education. That's why my friends and I are, are uh, writing papers, publishing books, uh, uh, giving talks, uh, uh, publishing uh, lectures online. So hopefully people will uh, will see that there is an advantage to uh, increased knowledge. There is all this vast uh, scientific um, uh, data that has been available that's available only in the last 10, 20 years that was not present a century ago. Uh, you know, and this recent uh, data on uh, neuroscience and physics and biology just completely revises the uh, the architectural design canon of, of the past century. So hopefully, if our society values science above dogma and and a certain tradition, sort of uh, uh, not a very good tradition, but a, a, an established tradition, uh, then uh, hopefully we will see some change.